high call series. Morning children. So we have completed the previous lesson in the last class and now we are going to learn a new lesson. And uh, this lesson is about clothes. Right? So we know this variable that we all wear clothes. And uh, why do we wear clothes? What is the purpose by which we wear clothes? Yeah, clothes are used to cover our body. Isn't it? When we wear clothes, our body gets uh, covered and those parts which we do not have this clothes get uh, opened. So clothes are used to cover our body. Then uh, it protects us. It protects us from the heat, from the cold, from the rain, the dust, the dirt. Huh? When we go out in the sun, it's very hot, but our body will not receive the direct sunlight because clothes are there. Isn't it? Yes. Then uh, during winter season, we use some special clothes so that the cold outside will not affect our body. Isn't it? We use raincoats during the rainy season so that the rain won't fall on our body. We won't get uh, wet. Huh? And uh, when you walk on the road, there are a lot of dust and dirt coming up because of the winds and all. And that also won't fall on our body because we wear clothes. Right? So we use clothes to cover our body and to protect our body from a hot, the heat, the cold, the water, the rain, the dust, the dirt and all. And it also helps us to look smart. Hmm? Neatly washed and ironed, pressed clothes help us to look uh, smart also, right? So we wear clothes basically of uh, these three purposes, to cover our body, to protect our body from heat, cold, rain, dirt and dust and uh, to make us look uh, smart, right? Now, we use uh, different types of clothes during different seasons. We use different types of clothes during different seasons. For example, we have three different seasons. We have a summer, we have a winter, and we have a uh, rainy season, isn't it? Yes. Summer, winter, and rainy are the three seasons that we have, and we use different types of clothes during these three different seasons, isn't it? So how is it during the winter, uh, summer season? During summer season, the climate is very hot, isn't it? The climate is very hot during the summer season. And what kind of clothes do we wear then? We wear cotton clothes during summer season because cotton clothes can absorb the sweat. Right? So during uh, summer season, we sweat a lot. We sweat a lot. Sweat means the water that comes out of our body through the skin. Okay, the small, small holes in our skin. So we sweat a lot and this uh, cotton clothes can absorb sweat and keep us cool. Okay, so summer season is a very hot season. Summer season is a very hot season and we use cotton clothes during summer season because cotton clothes can absorb the sweat that comes out of our body and it can keep us cool. Right? Now, the second season that we have is a winter season. So, what is the speciality of winter season? It's very cool, isn't it? It's very cool. Or it is very cold and that. Right? So if it is very cool, it's very cold, we will start to shiver. Isn't it? Then what kind of clothes do we wear during uh, winter season? We wear woolen clothes. What kind of clothes? 
woolen clothes. Why do we wear woolen clothes during winter? Because woolen clothes can keep us warm. Right? So woolen clothes can keep us warm and that is why we wear uh, woolen clothes during winter season. Right? Winter season is a cool season or a cold season. Very cold outside. Huh? During summer season, at night, we even sleep outside our home, isn't it? In many of the villages we can see. And in cities, usually people will go onto the terrace to sleep. Because it's very hot inside of the home. And it is comparatively cooler on the terrace or outside of the home. But what about winter season? Is it possible for us to go and sleep outside? Why? It's very cool. It's very cold inside. Outside, isn't it? And then what do we do? We will go and uh, yes, sleep inside the home. Why? It's very warm. It's very warm. Right? And uh, the same thing is happening when we wear woolen clothes. Right? The cold can get into the body through cotton clothes and all. But the woolen clothes can keep us warm inside it. So our body will be warm. Our body will not be cool. During the winter season. Now, we have a rainy season. And it is very rainy and uh, Wet season, isn't it? It's water everywhere, raining continuously, and we may have to go to school and all. And what kind of clothes do we wear during a uh, rainy season? Yes, we have a uh, raincoats. We use umbrella and a uh, gumboots. Isn't it? We use different things. Usually we wear raincoats, then we have umbrellas and uh, gumboots also. Why do we use these things? Because they can keep us dry. Right? So, it's a wet season, it's very rainy or it's a wet season and uh, that is the rainy season. And during rainy season, we wear raincoats, umbrellas, gumboots, etc. So that uh, it can keep us uh, dry. Now, what is a gumboot? See, we know usually we wear shoes, isn't it? It's like this. And uh, the, the uh, knot. But a gumboot, it has a long leg part. The zipper here. Okay, it's a rubber shoes kind of a stay thing and it uh, starts almost just below our knee so that uh, the water will not go inside. If we use an ordinary shoes, the water will still go inside and the socks will become wet and the skin of our leg will get damaged also, isn't it? But if it is a gum boot, it's quite difficult for the water to get inside because it's almost up to our knees, right? So such kind of boots that are worn during the rainy season is known as a gum boot. Clear? Yes. So we do wear different types of clothes based on the seasons. Huh? The seasons have got some specialities and we use the clothes according to this speciality so that we will get a better result. See summer is a hot season when we sweat a lot. And we use cotton clothes during summer season because cotton clothes can absorb the sweat and keep us cool. Winter is a cold season. We use woolen clothes because the woolen clothes can keep us warm. During the rainy seasons, it's rainy and wet outside. And then we use raincoats, umbrellas, gum boots, etc. Because these things can keep us dry. Okay, so this is the reason we use different types of clothes based on different seasons, right? So we know there are some people who do some specific jobs, isn't it? Some people that do specific jobs. For example, doctors are there, huh? then nurses are there, then uh, policemen. Then uh, we have postman, 
fireman ha huh? lawyer okay then uh, soldiers are there okay right so all these are people who do different kinds of jobs a specific kind of jobs specific kind of jobs now when we observe the dress they wear all the soldiers wear the same dress is it all the soldiers wear the same dress a, a kind of a green dress they wear right the doctors they use a white coat uh nurses nurses they wear white gown policemen khaki dress then postmen postmen they also wear khaki dress fireman again khaki lawyers black coat isn't it so all the soldiers will be wearing this particular green colored with some uh, rough design kind of a stuff a cloth then it all doctors will be wearing a white coat and all nurses will be wearing this white gown when we go to a hospital it's quite easy for us to identify who is a doctor and who is a nurse isn't it isn't it yes then policeman khaki colored dress postman khaki colored dress fireman khaki colored dress but there are still some differences isn't it police people will have a, a chain kind of a thread kind of a thing here then uh, stars will be here isn't it the pockets designs are different huh? but a postman a postman also wears a khaki dress but uh, he is wearing a simple khaki shirt right there won't be any special attached uh, pockets designs or stars or something like that in the same way the firemen also wear khaki dress but uh, they have some other additions which is suitable for the job that they are doing right so even if we have a policeman a uh, postman and a fireman in their uniforms standing there we can easily identify who is a postman who is a policeman and who is a fireman based on the dress right then lawyers are there they use a black gown isn't it we can easily identify he is a lawyer right so these are people who are doing some special jobs or a specific types of jobs and all these people do wear special types of dress okay there won't be any difference that uh, one doctor wears a white coat and another doctor wears a blue coat no right so everywhere everywhere the people who do these kinds of professions do follow the same type of a dress and these kind of dress that is followed by people who do special or specific jobs are known as what uniforms okay they are called the uniforms we know what uniform is isn't it yes all the students in the same school wear the same uniform the same pattern or colored dress isn't it yes so uh, the students from another school yeah they have different uniforms isn't it yes so there are difference in the students uh, the uniforms of a different schools in the same way there are difference in this uh, uh which is worn by the people who do different the jobs right so people who do specific jobs wear specific kind of dress that is known as a uniforms 
and uniforms we know it very well students know it very well isn't it students know it very well what a uniform is and uh, is there any other clothes that the students wear huh? do we wear the same dress everywhere when we go to school we wear the same dress isn't it we wear the same dress when we go to school and that is a uniform but uh, whenever and wherever we go do we wear the uniform for example there is a function in your family what kind of a dress do you wear during that time will you wear uniform again will you wear uniform again no what do we wear then we wear colorful and a bright dress isn't it we wear colorful and a bright dress during festivals during celebrations and occasions of get together isn't it huh? if you go to attend a friend's birthday party we wear obviously colorful and bright dress and on our birthday when we go to the school we wear same dress isn't it a colorful and bright dress because we are allowed to wear a colorful and bright dress only on such occasions when when we celebrate our birthday isn't it yes so during festivals celebrations and occasions of a get together like a parties or some functions and all we wear colorful and bright dress now you need to know one more thing that the people of different states wear different clothes different states means different regions right uh, the kind of dress that we wear here is not worn by the people in other regions okay people in other regions wear different colored and types of dress so in india there is a difference in a, the dress based on the regions where they live also okay so the dress that are worn by people who do specific jobs do specific, wear specific kind of dress that is known as a uniforms and it helps us easily to identify which profession a person is in which profession a person is in based on his uh, uniform right students usually wear uniforms when they go to school then uh, during festivals get togethers celebrations functions and all we wear different uh, colorful bright dress also uh, people in different regions wear different uh, kinds of dress okay so now we need to uh, check what are the raw materials that we need to make clothes so we know this is a shirt this is a shirt and the shirt is made up of a piece of cloth isn't it so what do we use to make that cloth what exactly do we use to make that uh, cloth so we use uh, one thing called the fiber so what do we use we use a uh, fiber fiber means third kind of a thing which we use for making clothes okay so basically we use uh, four different types of uh, fibers so first one is called uh, cotton fiber cotton fiber second one is called uh, woolen fiber third one is called uh, silk fiber and the fourth one is called uh, synthetic fiber okay so what are the four different types of fibers we use cotton fiber woolen fiber silk fiber synthetic fiber cotton fiber is something that we get from plants okay. cotton fiber is something that we get from the plant actually it's a flower okay cotton is basically a flower so these flowers are carefully plucked from the plants and then we do some processing because uh, these flowers have seeds inside it okay 
So this uh, seeds have to be removed and this uh, flower has to be clean, cleared from the dust, dried leaves. So many such kinds of dust and waste things will be there in that. So all these things are removed, processed and they are spun. They are spun to make long threads. Okay. They are spun to make long threads. And these threads are then woven. So weaving is a process of making clothes from the threads. Okay. So when we check this cloth, we can see, we can see some threads go in this way. Isn't it? And there are some other threads which go in the opposite way. Isn't it? Yeah. So these very tiny threads are arranged in this zigzag order. Isn't it? Yeah. That is the process called weaving. Okay, so weaving is a process that we make a cloth sheets from these threads and the instrument or the machine that we use for this weaving is called loom. Okay, so loom is the instrument or the machine that we use for the process called weaving. Right, and these looms can be operated in two ways. One is with the hands and our body. Okay. Some parts will be controlled by the leg and some will be controlled by the hands. And that is called a hand loom. That is called a hand loom. And some are controlled completely by electricity. They are called a power loom. Okay. So two kinds of looms are there. Hand loom and the power loom. A hand loom is completely operated by the man using his hands and legs. Whereas power looms are operated by using electricity. Got it? Okay. So weaving is the process of making clothes out of the spun threads using a loom. Right? Now, cotton fiber we get from plants. It's actually the flower part of a plant which is plucked carefully. The seeds are removed. This process cleared and then spun into the threads which is used in the process of weaving using a loom. Now we have a woolen fiber that is what we get from animal. Okay, basically sheep. Basically sheep. So sheep has a long hair on its body. Okay, it has long hair. This hair will be cut. This long hair that grows on this animal's body will be cut. Okay, that process is called shearing. Okay, so shearing is a process by which, yeah, the long hair that grows on the body of a sheep are cut from its body and then that is used for making clothes. Okay, again, this also has to be cleared. Because this uh, sheep do wander. No? It goes to different places in search of grass and all. A lot of you know, uh, kinds of sticks. Some rock pieces also may be there. So all these kinds of things have to be cleared. And then uh, it's processed, spun to make the threads. And woolen clothes are mostly knitted. Knitting is a process of making woolen clothes like uh, you know long sticks are there. Two long sticks will be mostly used uh, to make very tiny knots through which these uh, threads will be pulled out. Okay. So knitting is a process Knitting is a process by which uh, woolen clothes are uh, made. Right. So woolen fiber is something that we get from animal Basically, sheep, it's a long hair, it's cut, removed, and then cleared, and then it is spun to make long threads, and these threads are uh, used for making the process of uh, making woolen clothes, and that process is called knitting. Okay, now, silk fiber. Silk fiber, again, we get from animal. 
Okay, and here we use a worm for this. Okay, so there is a worm called the silk worm. We know caterpillars are there, no? Caterpillars, yes. These caterpillars eat the leaves for so many days and they become big and they form a smaller a kind of thing like this. Now, this is actually called the cocoon. Isn't it? That is called the cocoon. This cocoon is actually a thread that this animal make. This is this worm make. Okay, using its saliva and some other things, it produces a, a, a thread and it spins it around its body. Okay, and it becomes this much of a size. This worm goes inside this and it converts into a butterfly inside the cocoon. Isn't it? The worm, the caterpillar becomes a butterfly inside this cocoon. Okay, so out of all these animals or butterflies, this particular worm has a, a strong thread which we can use for making clothes. Well, okay, so for this purpose, what we do is we will grow silkworm. And the silkworms like to eat mulberry leaves a lot. Okay, so they farm mulberries. Those leaves are cut and they are given to the silkworms. The silkworm eat on that and it becomes, it makes the cocoon. And this cocoon will be taken off. Okay, if it becomes a butterfly, then this cocoon is of no use. So before the silkworm becomes a butterfly, they have to make it. What do they do? Yeah, they will boil it first. Means we will kill the animal inside it. And then it is processed and spun into the silk thread. Okay, so this cocoon is boiled and then it is processed to get the silk thread out of it. Right? And this silk thread is actually, yeah, woven into silk clothes using looms. Okay, so silk fiber is also a fiber that we get from animals called the silk worms. Right? Now, we have a synthetic fiber. Synthetic fiber is not a natural fiber. It is a man made fiber. Okay? Synthetic fiber is a man-made fiber. You know, uh, there are some clothes, we call it uh, nylon clothes are there, polyester clothes are there, rayon clothes are there, then uh, terrain clothes are there. Huh? Very soft looking clothes. Very soft looking clothes. Right? So they are not something that we get from the nature, but uh, we do some chemical processes and make these threads. Okay, so this is a nylon, polyester, then a rayon, these kinds of clothes are actually artificial clothes. We call it a artificial fiber also. Okay. They are called artificial fiber because they are man-made clothes. Right. So these are the major things that we use for making clothes. Cotton fiber that we get from the plants, which is actually the flower part of a plant, which is processed and we make up threads out of it and which is used for a weaving cotton clothes. Then the woolen clothes are actually the long hair that grows on the body of animals like a sheep, which is cut from the body, cleared and then we make a clothes out of it. Silk fiber is something that we get from the silk worm, the cocoon which is uh, made by the silk worms are processed and we get the fiber out of that. Synthetic fibers like rayon, nylon, polyester, terrain are uh, man-made and artificial fibers that we use for clothes, right? And uh, along with this kinds of things, we use uh, leather also. You know what leather is? What do you mean by leather? 
Yeah, the animal skin, isn't it? Leather is used for making clothes. Then uh, fur also, fur, F-U-R, fur. So what is fur? Fur is the long hair that grows on the body of animals. Especially like, for example, have you heard about the polar bear? Polar bear, the white colored bear that uh, lives in the northern polar region. They have a thick hair on their body, long thick hair. It's useful for them to protect themselves from the severe cold in that region. But we kill those animals to take that fur out and decorate our clothes for that, with that. Okay. So leather is basically used for making our shoes. Then the leather jackets are there. Leather belts are there. Leather wallets are there, purses. Okay. So leather and fur are used basically for making these kinds of things which we also wear, right? Then, there are a lot of people who are involved in the process of making clothes or with the clothes, right? So, we have earlier seen the process of weaving, isn't it? Yeah, they are the people who make the clothes, isn't it? They are the people who make the clothes. So, a person who makes the cloth is called a weaver. So who is a weaver? A weaver is a person who makes the cloth. Then we have different colored clothes. No? Some are red, some are green, some are blue. So how do these, see cotton flower is white in color. They won't be in a different colors like red, green, blue, yellow, orange and different shades. No. We add this color to this uh, threads. We add color to the threads and we make clothes out of those threads. Right? So, this process of adding color is known as a dye. D-Y-E. Not D-I-E. Okay? Dye. Yeah. Hair dyes are there. No? Same thing. So, there are people who do this job of adding colors to the clothes. There is a fiber and they are called the dyers. Okay. So dyers are people who add color to the clothes. And then we buy this cloth and we will take it to a person called a tailor. What does a tailor do? A tailor stitches it. Isn't it? A tailor stitches this cloth. And once when we use the cloth. After using it, there comes another man. Who is that? Washerman. Who is that? Washerman. And what does a washerman do? Washerman wash the clothes, dries it properly, irons it perfectly and brings it back to us so that we can use it again. Isn't it? A washerman washes the clothes, dries it properly, irons it and makes it ready to be used again. Right? So these are the different people who get involved in our clothing. A weaver is a person who weaves the cloth. A dyer is a person who adds a color to that. A tailor is a person who stitches the cloth. A washerman is a person who wash the cloth. Right? Now, one more important point. We shouldn't take care of the clothes properly. In the beginning of the lesson, we have seen that the clothes helps us in a lot of ways, isn't it? It protects us from uh, heat, cold, rain, dirt. Huh? It helps us in so many ways. So we should take care of our clothes also. Okay? We should wash it properly. We should uh, wash it properly so that all the dirt, the sweat and the kind of things that it has should get washed off. Okay, that is most important. Second, it should be properly dried. We should keep the clothes in the sun. It should not be kept in the shades. Because if it is kept in the sun, see, uh, sometimes what happens is, you know, some bacteria, some uh, fungus or virus kinds of things will grow in our dress. Because we use them continuously. The sweat, the dust and all these kinds of things help this virus to grow. Sometimes after washing it, it may not die. 
But if we keep it in the sun, in the heat of the sun, definitely they will die. So there is no doubt in that. Right? So we should dry the clothes in the sun and we should iron them, fold them properly, keep it in the cupboard for using it. Okay? So these are different ways by which we can take up care of our clothes. Right? So that is the lesson part of this lesson. And now it is time for us to do the activity part of this. Right? So children, we have already completed the lesson uh, clothes. Right? And now it is time for the activity part of this lesson. Okay? Now, the activity part of this lesson starts with a true or false question. There are five sentences given there. What we need to do is, uh, yes, we need to read these sentences thoroughly. Check with what we have learned in the lesson and uh, check whether it uh, matches with what we have learned in the lesson or not. If the statement is the same as what we have studied in the lesson, then we need to mark it as a true. And if it is not as what we have studied in the lesson, then we need to mark it as a false, right? So that is a true or false question. Okay. Now, I'll read the question sentences one by one. Okay, I'll read the sentences one by one and uh, after reading the sentence, we will check whether it is uh, the same as what we have read in the lesson or not. Okay, right. The first sentence is, we look smart in clothes. We look smart in clothes. So when we discussed about uh, clothes, uh, we said we use clothes for protection, safety and uh, clothes help us to be smart as well, isn't it? Yeah, clothes help us to look smart, right? So the answer is a uh, true. Second sentence, we get cotton from sheep. We get cotton from sheep. Hmm, cotton we get from a plant, cotton plant, isn't it? The flower of the plant is used for a process to get a cotton thread with which we weave cotton clothes, isn't it? Yes, so what we get from sheep is wool. So the sentence is a false. Synthetic clothes is a man-made fiber. Synthetic clothes are man-made fiber. Yes, it's a true. They are not a something that we get from a nature. Fourth sentence, we get a silk from the silkworm. We get silk from the silkworm, yes. Silkworm eats the mulberry leaves and once when it starts to become a pupa, it uh, makes a thread out of a liquid from its body and it makes itself inside of that which is known as a cocoon which we process to get a silk, isn't it? Yes, so in that sense, it's a true. Woolen clothes keep us cool, the fifth sentence. Woolen clothes keep us cool. Uh, we wear woolen clothes during winter, isn't it? So why do we wear woolen clothes in winter? Because woolen clothes can keep us warm during the cold winter, isn't it? Which clothes can keep us cool? Cotton clothes can keep us cool. So the sentence is a false. Okay. So we have done all the five sentences here now. And now I will read the sentences once again. And after that, I will let you read it, right? We look smart in clothes. True, because uh, clothes can make us look smart. We get cotton from sheep is false because we get cotton from cotton plant. And we get wool from sheep. Synthetic is a man-made fiber. Synthetic clothes are man-made fiber. It's true. We get a silk from the silk worm. Silk worm cocoon is what that we process to make a silk thread. Again, it's true. Woolen clothes keep us cool is false because woolen clothes can keep us warm during the winter season and it's a cotton clothes that can keep us cool. Right? So we have done all the five sentences. Now I'll keep the screen the same for a minute so that you can read it.
Okay, so now we'll move on to the next one. B, fill in the blanks. So there are five sentences given there and every sentence has a blank also, isn't it? Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to read the sentences. We need to understand what they're to be filled with the blank words also, okay? And now then we need to select the correct word with which we can uh, complete the blank so that we can get a meaningful complete sentence over there, okay? Right, so what is the first sentence given there? Cotton clothes keep us dash. So we have learned that during summer season we wear cotton clothes because cotton clothes can keep us cool, isn't it? So cool is the right answer. In rainy season, we wear dash to protect ourselves from getting wet. So what do we wear during the rainy season? Rainy season it will be raining heavy and uh, there will be water everywhere. And if you want to get yourself not wet or dry, what should we use then? We use a, a raincoat, isn't it? So we wear a raincoat in rainy season to protect ourselves from getting wet. Because a raincoat can keep us dry. People of different states of our country wear dash types of dresses, clothes, different types of clothes. We have seen it, isn't it? Yeah, people from the different states of our country wear different types of clothes. Synthetic clothes are made up of dash fiber, artificial fiber. So what do we use to make synthetic clothes? Artificial fiber or man-made fibers are used, isn't it? Yes, artificial fibers are used for making synthetic clothes. We wear dash clothes on special occasions. Special clothes, colorful, bright dress will be used for a special occasions, isn't it? Yes. Now, I will read these sentences once again. And after that, I will let you read them yourself, okay? Cotton clothes keep us cool. In rainy season, we wear raincoat to protect ourselves from getting wet. People of different states of our country wear different types of clothes. Synthetic clothes are made of artificial fiber. We wear special clothes on special occasions. Right? Now, I'll keep the screen the same for another minute. So that... Uh, yeah, you can read it by yourself once again, okay? Okay, now we'll move on to the next one. Say, name any clothes you like to wear in winter season. So, name two clothes you like to wear in winter season. We usually wear sweater and uh, shawls. Right? Sweaters and uh, shawls we wear during the summer season, uh, winter season. We can write uh, names of uh, muffler uh, also. Summer season is uh, for uh, cotton clothes. Then other light colored clothes. Isn't it? We prefer light colored clothes during the summer season. In a rainy season, we wear a raincoat and a gumboots. Hmm? On special occasions, we wear colorful dress or a 
design a dress, isn't it? We wear a colorful dress or a designer dress during a special occasions, right? So in winter season, we, we use sweaters and shawls. In summer season, we use cotton clothes and light colored clothes. In rainy season, we use raincoats and gumboots. And on special occasions, we use a colorful dress and a designer dress, right? So I'll keep the screen the same for another minute so that you can, uh, yes, go through that once. Fine. Now we'll move on to the next one. Match the following. So different kinds of dress with uh, images with the names. So in the first image we can see a small girl coming in with a sweater, muffler and all. So we identify it as a winter season. This is a silk cloth. So this is related to silk warm. Mm, this is uh, related to rainy season. Oh, I missed the one. Okay, I'll do it. So this is a sweater which belongs to a sheep. Right? And this is a plain cotton simple shirt which we we are during the summer season. Right? So the first picture in which we can see a small girl coming in with a sweater and a muffler cap which says it's winter season. In the second one, we can see a lady. She is wearing a silk sari. So it is from the silk worm. The third picture is about a sweater. We get uh, it from the sheep. Fourth one, we can see a boy standing in the rain, wearing a raincoat and a rain uh, an umbrella, which says it's of rainy season. Fifth one is a simple cloth, a shirt, cotton shirt, which means it's of a summer season, right? So we have done it and uh, I will uh, keep the window the same for another minute so that you can uh, read it yourself, okay? Okay, now we'll move on to the next one. Answer the following questions. Why do we wear clothes? Answer. We wear clothes to cover our body and to look smart in clothes. They protect us from heat, cold, etc. We wear clothes to cover our body and to look smart. They protect us from heat, cold, etc. So that is why we wear clothes. Second question. Who wears a uniform? Who wears? Students and people who do special jobs wear a uniform. 
so who are the who are the people who wear uniforms students and the people who do special jobs wear a uniform right three why do we wear woolen clothes in winter why do we wear woolen clothes in winter answer we wear woolen clothes in winter to protect from cold so woolen clothes can keep us warm during the winter season and that is why we wear woolen clothes in winter okay so it protects us from cold where do we get the silk from where do we get silk from we get the silk from silk worms we get silk from silk worms fifth question who washes and irons our clothes so we have seen different people who get involved in the clothes of ours isn't it in that washer man washes and irons our clothes isn't it yes so why do we wear clothes we wear clothes to cover our body and it looks smart in clothes they protect us from heat cold etc who wears a uniform students and the people who do special jobs wear a uniform why do we wear woolen clothes in winter we wear woolen clothes in winter to protect us from cold because woolen clothes can keep us warm where do we get the silk from we get the silk from silk worms who washes and irons our clothes washer man washes and irons our clothes right so we have completed the question answer part in this and uh, i'll keep this window the same for another minute so that you can uh, read the questions and answers once again fine now we'll move on to the next one project project or activity collect the pictures of people wearing different types of clothes from different states of our country and paste in your scrapbook so we need to collect the different traditional dress of people of different states and we need to paste them yes we have got some pictures here this is a traditional dress of people of maharashtra this is how the traditional bengalis are traditional rajasthanis are like this this is a dress there punjabis this is a dress of traditional punjabis and this is a traditional kashmiri dress right so we can collect uh, the traditional dress of other states of india as well and uh, uh, paste in your scrapbook right so with that we have completed the activities or exercise part of this lesson and uh, we will meet in the next class with a new lesson and till we meet in the next class stay home stay safe right thank you then